All right. Who's happy to be here this morning? So I could resist. Good morning. Nobody tell Randy. We were texting already. Except this prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this day, Lord. We're grateful for your fallen our lives. We're grateful for this fellowship that you brought us into and with you. Father, we ask you to bless our worship this morning. Bless each of us in hearing of your word. And with amazing like the rain that you sent, I may not return to you for the comfort of this purpose here. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Well, God, that's what you said. Amen. 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 So things are a little different today because we don't have our praise music, so you guys are the praise team this morning, amen? amen. We're going to start our opening hymn, This Little Light of Mine, number 58. No, 585. 585. That too. Either one, sing either one. in prayer. So this morning, Father, we lift these prayers up to you, and Lord, hear our prayers. Father, thank you for your Son, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. It was through his life, his perfect life, lived among us, that by accepting his gift, your grace of Christ, we can approach the throne with our prayers. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you in the mighty name of he that saved us, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Well, good morning and good morning again. A uh, couple of announcements. Although I don't have a sheet in front of me. Does anybody have one handy? Thank you. Um, we, there's a couple of things going on in town on the, on the 13th, right? Which is next week. We're going to have here at, at 10 a.m. 
It's going to be at 10 a.m., right, the presentation for, the, uh, for hurricane preparedness or just emergency preparedness. There's also the Mattituck Presbyterian Church annual barbecue on that day from 4 to 6.30. And there's going to be a prayer group meeting at the Strawberry Fields Jubilee, and that's going to be from 12 to 4. We have a trustee meeting this week? Um, no. There is no trustee meeting this week. Are there any meetings? There are no meetings this week. <laughs> and the congregation said, yay. To be the pastor here is like working in a Mel Brooks movie. <laughs> yes, sir. There seems to be some contradictory information about the nominating committee. Yeah, meeting next week, next week after service. Right, somebody put the 21st. We were going back and forth. It's next week after service. It'll be very brief, All right? We pray. <laughs> Any other announcements? There's going to be a sign-up sheet for the Disciple Bible Study. Uh, you'll start seeing more information on the Disciple Bible Study. I want to start it in September. I haven't picked a day. I just want to see who's interested and who wants more information. So if you're interested and you want more information, I'll lay the sheet on the table outside. Just put your name in there, and I'll get in touch with you. As I was cleaning off my desk, I came across all kinds of things. And one of the things I came across was these late servant ministry certificates and one of our very own Natalie Marie Alensky. Yay! Natalie. <laughs> Natalie, here is your certificate for climate justice. And, <laughs> and climate justice is why the lawn looks the way it does, in case you're wondering. And here's your certificate for lay servants as Christian transformational leaders. Yeah. And to make it 75, here's one for transforming evangelism, which I heard was your favorite class. <laughs> and I always said that was your favorite class because that was the class that I was instructing. <laughs> ah, what happened to Christian humility, right? That we're supposed to have. And welcome back to join us this morning. Um, any other announcements? Any, anything else going on this week? We had, a, we had a nice time at the parade. Many, many bubbles were distributed Yay. in the air and in the bottles. And the, tent, the canopy worked really well. It was nice. It was a nice time. And thank you for everybody that came out and helped represent us. Uh, anything else? Any announcements? All right. Will you please join me in the reading of our prayer of illumination? Let us read. Guide me, O God by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light I may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace through Christ our Lord, amen. Good morning. The reading this morning is from Luke 11, 33 through 36. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it in a cellar or under a basket, but on a stand, so that those who enter may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no dark part, it will be wholly bright, as when a lamp with its rays gives you light. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. That takes care of the back of the house. You wanna, you wanna go around and take the lights off the front? Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, hey, by the way, thank you. If it wasn't for you, I don't know who'd get on that roof. You are awesome. Yeah. He's, uh, is that the house you were talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. They leave their lights up all year round. They leave their lights on all year long. Here, check it out. So they leave their lights on all year long? All year long. 
and those bulbs change according to whatever holiday season it is. Get out. Can't wish I could. So like July 4th? Those bulbs come red, white, and blue. Thanksgiving. Harvest colors. Halloween. Black and orange. Memorial Day. Camouflage. Get out. Can't wish I could. Oh, I, I bet it's embarrassing for the neighbors. Oh, the neighbors. We're totally embarrassed. We complain about it all the time. Oh, and when there is no holiday season going on, those bowls become little red hot chili pepper lights. What? Yep. Give me one good reason why you should celebrate the pepper. <sighs> Can't wish I could. It's like your neighbors are in Motel 6. And my wife, she's always saying, let's just leave the lights on just a little bit longer. Let's just stay in the spirit of things. But when Christmas is over, you take down the lights. Am I right? I don't know. I'm not even the right guy to ask. I don't even put lights on my house. Why don't you put lights on your house? I'm afraid of heights. But the question is, why do you put lights on your house? To celebrate Christmas, the birth of Christ, all that kind of stuff. There you go. That's your answer. What? If you don't want to celebrate Christ all year long, then take the lights down. That's not what I was saying. You're putting words in my mouth. You're siding with my wife. Hey, hey, I'm not siding with anyone. I'm, and I'm sorry. I didn't realize that you and God were, uh, you know, on the outs? Yeah. We're not on the outs. Me and God, we're very tight. We're very, very tight. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Prove it. Prove what? Are you daring me to leave my lights on all year long? Hey, no dare here. I'm just saying, you gonna let your little light shine? Wait. Man the letter, my friend. What? Man that ladder. We're gonna get back up there and hang these lights. No, 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 oh, I was just kidding. Oh, yes. It is gonna be a proclamation of my faith. Didn't you hear? I I'm afraid of heights. You're already up there. <laughs> honey, honey, get the apple cider ready. Put on the Perry Como records. These lights are gonna shine. <laughs> get back here. These lights have to shine. Well, guess maybe you picked up that our theme is let your light shine, amen? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. That's the opening scripture from the Gospel of John that I thought was appropriate to read because we're continuing in the parables and... Um, you might not have considered this a parable, but Christ is using the analogy of the light. And we just had Sandy read it from Luke. And Jesus is saying, and now we're going to read you another one that's probably more familiar to you from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, which is the one Angela put up, but I didn't tell her we weren't using it <laughs> for the reading. It says, you, you are the light of the world, a city set on a hill not be hidden nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand and it gives light to all the house in the very same way let your light shine before others so that they see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven amen so that's the more familiar one let your light shine but i wanted this whole sermon to be about that light and when jesus says your light He's not talking about the light that you generated. He's talking about him living inside of you. He's talking about his light shining through you. That's why I read the opening of John. Because John very clearly says, 
Jesus came into the world that he was the light of the world. So, well, the sun was here already. We had fires already. So what kind of light are we talking about? We're talking about the light that exposes the truth of all things. Amen? That's what Jesus does in our life. He comes and he reprograms us. We've been programmed to speak a certain way and to see things in a certain light and to respond in certain ways. We've been programmed by the world. And a lot of the information we've been given is bad information that's been handed down from generation to generation. And you can see it in the history of the world. Look what's going on today. Look what's always been going on. Jesus came as the light to shine the truth on different things. And it starts with each of us individually, that he exposes the truth about us. Because nothing begins until we admit that we need Jesus as a savior in our life to clear up all those spots, to blow away those clouds. I was once blind, but now I see, amen? And what's the other, one of my favorite sayings from Psalms, you are the light on my path. You are a lamp onto my feet so that I can see where I'm going. And Jesus is the light. He gives me the direction for my life. And I have life. I have an abundant life because of my trust and my faith in Jesus. So going back to the Luke reading, he says, your eye, the reason I picked Luke is because there's something added in this one that's not in the Matthew reading. And it's this. Jesus says, your eye is the lamp of your body. So what, is he, what does he mean? I remember when I was a kid in the 60s, I watched a cartoon called Gigantor. Anybody remember Gigantor? And rays of light would shine from his eyes, right? Well, that's not what Jesus is talking about. He says it's the lamp of your body. Your eyes are shining a light into you, right? So what you covet what you look at, what you consider, is what you worship. So Jesus is saying, be careful about what you're using to be the light inside you. What should we be looking at? God. We should be looking at God's word because God knows exactly what we need. And God will provide what we need. When we go out, we go looking for what we want. So the, my internal light was filled with chocolate cake right, or whatever, you know how we do that, right, so whatever your particular thing is, you keep going there, you keep looking at it, that's populating the light in your body, that's informing you, that's, whether you know it or not, that's going to have an influence on your decisions and other things you do, and Jesus is saying, be careful, because he gives this statement, and I read over this many times without thinking of it in great depth, but one time it struck me, and I'm going to give you my understanding of this. He goes on, he says, your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, meaning when you're looking at good things, and what does he say when he signs off, Paul signs off on one of his letters? He says, whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is pleasing, focus on these things, he says. So Jesus is saying, when your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light, but when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. And then he says, Therefore, be careful lest the light in you be darkness. So what does that mean? This is my understanding of that after reading it several times over many decades. A lot of us inform ourselves spiritually with a false light. We think there's some other way to spirituality, right? We think there's some other way that I can connect with the internal me um, through this worship or that worship or this self-help book or that, or I'm just intellectually, you know, I'm, I'm so brilliant that I don't need all this spiritual stuff, right? And I feel, or philosophy, right? Pick all the so many ways people could say that this is what informs me, this is what makes me whole. That's a false light. And Jesus says, if you're calling that light, your darkness is even greater than the person that hasn't even heard about Jesus because you've chosen something instead of the true light. And if you go back and listen to what I said in the Bible, it said Jesus came into the world and he was, what word did they use? He was the true light. He wasn't one of these false religions, false lights that everybody, that most of us get attracted to. So it's important that we go for the true light. So Mark, interestingly, in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus says this, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. 
This is one of the first uh, scriptures I go to when I'm dealing with someone who's a literalist. You know, somebody says, everything in the Bible is exactly what it says, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, I guess your hand has never caused you to sin then, huh? Because I see it's still firmly attached to your arm. So Jesus loved to use hyperbole to make his point, and that's what this is. It's an exaggeration to drive home a point. But it gets to what we're talking about. He says, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. So that line is for all of you that like the loving God in the New Testament, <laughs> as opposed to that nasty, mean God in the Old Testament. It's the same God. Nothing has changed, right? It's, and Jesus warned us more about hell than anywhere else in the Bible that I've read. So this is something we need to listen to. And what Jesus is telling us with all that hyperbole is it's so important to enter into eternal life that radical means are necessary to remove whatever might prevent that. So it always comes down to the same thing. It comes down to idolatry. What do you, idol you, know, what do you idolize? What is it in your life? You know, popularity, is it money? Is it sex? Is it some substance abuse issue? Is it gossip? Oh, there's just so many, so many ways that it can distract us. So if any of you are doing that, you're in trouble. No. The truth is, it, it boils down to this again, what we talked about last week. It's a matter of the heart. Amen? It's a matter of the heart. I did many things that are not God-honoring before I was 40, but I had an alibi for all of them. I had a reason for doing all of them, right? And I was better than most other people anyway. I wasn't like the rest of those guys at the railroad. They did far worse things than I did, right? So that kind of thinking, you're on a highway to hell, as the prophet ACDC once said. The change is when God gives you a new heart you're still doing these things because they're a habit that you formed. It's just a habit. Many, many things we do. But now God's given you a new heart. And what? He's given you eyes that see. So now you know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Jesus is the truth. Now I know the truth. He convicted me. This stuff is harmful for you. This stuff is harmful for the people in your life that love you. This stuff leads to death. You need to eliminate this stuff from your life. So with your new heart, you understand that, you feel convicted, you confess, and you say, Lord, help me with this. And that's what I always go back to, because God doesn't say, you need to fix this, good luck. That's not how God works. God says, you need to fix this, stay with me, and I will help you. I will help you work this out. And that's how it works. God wants to partner with us to give us that life, amen? It's nothing that we're gonna be able to do on our own. So with our new heart, and our new eyes, understanding that we need help with this, we start our walk of sanctification, where I start allowing Jesus to work in me so that I can slowly start removing and untangling these things. We used, you remember I used the analogy of weeds growing and taking over. Well, with my hedge trimmer, I attacked that wild rose that's behind the dumpster, and I cut it back only to expose poison ivy. <laughs> But that's how it is in your life. You're going to have sins, and you're going to start hack cutting back at it, cutting it back. I don't want this to dominate me. And then you might expose something else. Oh, look. And Nancy and I were throwing this word around the other day. Look, here's the root cause of all that other stuff that was so buried, that was so blocked from your consciousness because maybe it was painful, and you didn't want to remember it. But now it's, a, it's affecting things that you're doing. This is the stuff that God's going to help you with. This is the stuff that God's going to walk you through. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul says, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience, sons and daughters. 
See, when I say sons of disobedience, very rarely does a woman say that it should be gender inclusive. <laughs> but you understand, whenever we're using these pronouns, we're talking about all of us, amen? So let no one deceive you with empty words. The problem is you go to a lot of churches and stuff, and they don't preach the Bible. They preach some form of philosophy, or they preach some form of social activism, which is not bad. It's just not salvation. It's not what's going to free you or, or inform you. So he says, and I love the line, sons of disobedience. I always thought that should be a, a, a show, right? Maybe out a motorcycle gang or something like that. The sons of disobedience. Because that's what we were. We are disobedience, right? We're just petulant, disobedient children when it comes to God, right? We, what do we say? I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to go to church. I don't want to do that stuff. I want what I want. Therefore, Paul continues, do not become partners with them. For at one time you were in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Where did that light come from? That light comes from Jesus. And as long as we're attached to the vine, I can receive from that source of light, and I can be the light for others. As long as I'm attached to that vine, Jesus will work through me to share a word with somebody, to pray with somebody, to be generous to somebody, to be forgiving of somebody, to not get insulted by somebody. That's a biggie, right? I used to have all my trigger things, and now I smile. Somebody will say something that used to really tick me off. See, my language is even getting better. Yeah. Somebody would say something that would really tick me off, but now I just smile when they say that. Because you know what? I smile because my Savior has healed me, amen? Just like that blind person, just like that paralytic. Remember when the blind man finds his birth and Jesus heals him, and, and the Pharisees are so upset, they drag him into the thing, they're questioning him, and how is it that this happened? And he says, why don't you go ask him? He says, all I know is that I was blind and now I see, right? And he couldn't hide his joy for what Jesus had done for him. And that's waiting for all of us. And it's new glories from day to day. It tells us, you know, like, oh, look what Jesus did in my life. Isn't this wonderful? Well, stay tuned because he's just getting started. And there's amazing things every step of the way for you. So you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. You hear these words over and over again, the fruit. And it is tying the fruit to the light. And it's good, right, and true. True. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord, not to you. Take no part in unfruitful works of darkness. See, the, the symbolism keeps going. But instead expose them. How do you expose things? By shining light on them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine in you. Amen? Amen. Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead. That's not a Bible verse. Uh, best study says that that was an early part of a hymn that they did during a baptismal service for people that were coming into the faith. And the language is, is wonderful. Arise, O sleeper. I remember when I was first being exposed to the word, the guy that was helping me read through the Bible used this analogy. He said, before people are born in the spirit, they're zombies. They're zombies. They're just walking around like robots. And I, and I hear people say, oh, Religion, you're just robots following rules. And it's absolutely the other way around. It's absolutely the other way around. Before you're born in the spirit, you're just an animal following the passions of your flesh, following what the world tells you to do, following whatever you needed to do to assimilate and fit in or belong. That's what you did. You're just a robot responding to stimulus. When Jesus comes into your life, he gives you the free will. You have the understanding to see things. And you are no longer a zombie and you have awakened from the dead. Isaiah, arise and shine, for your light has come. All right? So Jesus was in the beginning. He was called the light. And Isaiah is now talking to the nation of Israel. But 
This is God talking to us today, right? The nation of Israel was God's chosen people. We are God's chosen people. Arise and shine, for your light has come. It's the Messiah. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The glory of the Lord Jesus has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. It pretty much does. And thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen on you. Amen? So let everybody know that you are a Christian by displaying the light that comes in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Be Jesus when you're out there. And finally... <laughs> All right, because you got three certificates, so I'm going to allow that. <laughs> so I believe, Janet, I believe you gave me this quite some time ago. This is what happens when you clean off your desk occasionally. The light in you, it's quiet, it's early, my coffee is hot, the sky is still black, and the world is asleep. The day is coming. In a few moments, the day will arrive. It will roar down the track with the rising of the sun. The stillness of the dawn will be exchanged for the noise of the day. The calm of solitude will be replaced by the pounding of the human race. The refuge of the early morning will be invaded by decisions to be made and deadlines to be met. For the next 12 hours, I will be exposed to the day's demands. It is now that I must make a choice. This is wonderful. Right? You're going to be exposed to the world. And here's the choices. I choose peace. I will live forgiven, and I will forgive so that I may live. I choose patience. I will overlook the inconveniences of the world. Rather than complain that a wait is too long, I will thank God for a moment to pray. Instead of clenching my fist at new assignments, I will face them with joy and courage. I choose kindness. I will be kind to the poor, for they are alone, kind to the rich, for they are afraid, and kind to the unkind, for such is how God has treated me. I choose goodness. I will be overlooked before I will boast. I will confess before I will accuse. I choose goodness. I choose faithfulness. Today, I will keep my promises. I choose gentleness. If I raise my voice, may it be only in praise. If I clench my fist, may it be only in prayer. And if I make a demand, may it be only of myself. I choose self-control. I am a spiritual being. I refuse to let what will not rule the eternal. I refuse to let what will rot rule the eternal. I will be impassioned only by my faith. I will be influenced only by God and will be taught only by Christ. I choose self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. To these I commit my day. If I succeed, I will give thanks. If I fail, I will seek his grace. Let me change that. When I fail, I will seek his grace. And then, when this day is done, I will place my head on my pillow and rest. Amen? Amen. And thank you, John. This is how to show that light that Jesus has shined in your life. Amen? Now, uh, as a little change, we're going to sing Holy, Holy, Holy. It's in a key that you will not recognize. But if you care to, you can look it up in your hymnal. I believe it's 64, unless it's 646, like the last mistake about it. I believe it's 64, holy, 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 and if you can, try to join us in our key.
Okay. Let's pray. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, you're aware of all things, Father. And a sparrow does not fall to ground that you are not aware of. And Father, today, right this moment, we're rising up prayer for our sister Joni and for that entire family, Father, oh, so much that they've been going through. And Father, we pray that uh, we are the respite. We pray that we collectively could be that breath of fresh air, that we can be that moment of sunshine in their lights. Father, we ask you to help us be the light in their lives. And Father, as Joni goes to the hospital now, we pray that you be with the family, that they enjoy the peace that only comes from being a child of God, and that you be in the minds, you be the heart and the, the hands and the eyes of the care, caring professionals that will greet them at the hospital, and that Joni receives sozo healing, Father, mind, body, and spirit, that you restore her, that she might sing your praises, and that more people would know that you are the great physician, and not just in our body, but in our entire life. And Father, we pray all this in the name of the great physician, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, and all God's children said, Amen. 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 And that's the way you should pray. Whenever you're exposed to a situation like that, try, try to eliminate this line from your, from your repertoire. I'll pray for you. Try to eliminate that. Try never to say, I'll pray for you. Try to replace it with this. Let me pray with you. That has way more power. It's going to have way more power for you as well as for them also. Amen? So we begin um, our communion service now, and we begin communion with our confession. As I was talking before, we pray that God convicts us of what needs to be convicted so that we can confess it and he can start his healing in our lives. Amen? So let us read this corporate prayer of confession, and then I will give you a moment to raise up your own prayers. Let us read. God of light, I confess that often I go astray and leave your light. I follow the dim lights of the world of success and fortune. I follow the dim lights that call me to be more religious by following rules. I follow the fading light of personal salvation. Forgive me for not seeking the true light of your love for all the world. Forgive me for not following the ways of Jesus, my Lord and my Savior. I pray you help me to abide in your light, to live the abundant life of a kingdom citizen. I ask all this trusting in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Take this moment to raise up your own prayers of confession. Amen. Now hear the good news. If you, have, if you have accepted God's gracious provision of salvation through Jesus, you have received the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Christ, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. And all God's children said, thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks be to God. And thank you for the preparation of the table. Um, when I had another analogy, uh, I think I mentioned this last week. When I was at Hampton Bays, um, I'm, I love working outside. When I got to Hampton Bays, all I saw were trees that needed a haircut, bushes that needed to be ripped out of the ground, lawn that needed to be, I just went crazy taking care of stuff. But I'm always thinking of the next job before I finish the job I'm doing. And what I would do is I would cut stuff and I would just leave it laying on the ground because I saw something else I had to cut. And the fellow that took care of the property before and now after me, he used to call that pastor droppings. So that pastor droppings all over the yard. So if you go to the parsonage, you're going to see pastor droppings all over the yard. You noticed yesterday, right? So 
my ex-wife hated this. When I cut and prune stuff, I just leave it lay on the ground. And then it'll dry up, it'll shrink, it becomes brittle. And then when I rode over the lawnmower, it's mulch, man. Each time I run it over the lawnmower, it slowly disappears. I don't have to rake, combine, go to the, I don't have to do any of that stuff. I, I'm doing direct to soil recycling, right? So that brings up the analogy though about the branch that's not attached to the vine, right? The minute I cut those branches and they fall to the ground, they start to wither because they've lost their connection to their source of life, amen? And they wither and then I can chew them up so easily. And that's the way it is with us. You know, we spend our lives connecting and disconnecting. It's the truth. You know, when we're saved, it's not like, okay, I'm connected to Jesus and life's just going to be one long, wonderful escalation, right? It's not that way. We connect to Jesus and we say, oh, this is wonderful. And then we get distracted and next thing we know, we're, we're this far away again. And then we're that prodigal, we come running back. Because I want that again. I want it because I've, I've experienced it. I know the truth now and I can't let it go. But we keep separating. So remember, you can separate, but just get back. Get back and get to that source of life. Amen? Let me get my hymnal so I can do this. But the first thing uh, we want to do is offer ourselves to God. Amen? We offer ourselves in every way that we can. We offer our finances, we offer our time, our talents, and our treasures. So while the choir sings our anthem, which is entitled He, I'm going to ask the ushers to come up. And ask you to give it a joyous heart, but not in a spirit of compulsion. I know for you. Amen and amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the glorious light that you've shown on this world, that you've shown on each of us. 
And Father, we pray that you help always keep us to walk in that light. And Father, we pray that you accept these offerings from us and that you help us to use them in your kingdom. And we pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <coughs> you may be seated. <coughs> Excuse me. Whenever I try to sing like Nick, I end up with a cough. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you came into a dark world as the light of the world. And even though your own people rejected you, you persevered in your steadfast love. And you stayed with us. And you sent prophets to preach your word. And ultimately, you came in the flesh yourself as Christ Jesus to be the sacrifice for our sins. Through his acts, you started your church here in heaven and called your, your church here on earth and called each of us into that church, the body of Christ, so that we might receive his light and be the light for the world. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join in this unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, ye gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, and as in all things, he gave thanks to you for that bread. He then took the bread, and he broke it. And he passed it to each of the disciples, and he said, Take and eat of this. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he likewise took the cup. And again, as in all things, he gave thanks to you for the fruit of the vine. And he gave it to each of his disciples and he said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves with praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim this mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Would anybody like um, any of the pre-prepared cups rather than doing intinction? Deb? You know what, Debbie? Deb? Before you hand them out, just hold them up. Heavenly Father, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by that blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one in each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in his final victory and we all feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. And now, as Christ taught us, let us pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Committee meeting last night at the 
parsonage. And one of the things we discussed, um, there was nobody here. There was a bunch of us at the house. And one of the things we discussed was um, communion. And we all had different communion experiences, right? And somebody was saying, well, you know, it would be really nice if we could just get the My cups God. like we used to and get the pieces of bread and, you know, everybody lined up. I said, but we don't have a, we don't have a communion rail. I'm on? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I guess we don't have a communion rail. So we discussed it, and we're, we're thinking about this, and we'll, we'll give it further talk. We're thinking maybe we could invite a group of people up to stand in front. Everybody will take a cup and a piece of bread, and then I'll say some magic words, and then everybody does the communion, and then we'll have the next group come up. We'll alternate, right? We're just, but it's not important how you do the communion. It's important that you understand what's going on in this communion. That God has condescended to partner with us in our lives, amen, to be part of us. That he abide in us and we abide in him. That's the important thing. How it actually happens is beyond that. Now, understanding who's the head of the household, I'm going to ask you. Do you want to do the bread or the juice? <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll, we'll do each other after we do everybody else, so. Well, we'll do us after we do everybody else, okay? I know that sometimes we do it the other way around, yeah. But, so, the table has been set. The offer has been given. Come commune with Christ, amen, that he may be Lord of your life. Oops, excuse me.
glorify the Father in heaven. And each day I pray, I ask God that everything that I speak, say, and do glorify Him, not just man, but glorify Him in the name. Inspired by what we heard today, we'll sing, in the faith we sing, 2129, I have decided to follow Jesus every day. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with every, everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. And wherever you go this week, and whatever you do, be safe, be kind, but always be his. Amen? Amen. Amen. You may be seated and enjoy this postlude. While Ava and Max put out the candles. We gotta put out the candles. Ava. Light, light your wick before you put it out, all right? Here you go, Ava. Go put out the candles. All right, but you're going to carry the light back, okay? Thank you. Let's go. Ha, ha, ha. 